I didn't think it was the virus, honestly. I thought it was just a really bad pneumonia. Um, and then when we got the results, you know, both of us looked at each other and just were in shock. Well, he started to get sick um, Sunday night, um, the Sunday after he got back from Orlando, which was on a Wednesday, so it was after Mardi Gras. Sunday evening, came home, felt fine. Went to a leadership meeting at church Sunday night, felt fine. Got home about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Uh, by 10 o'clock, uh, getting ready for bed, everything hit. It was really like a light switch. It, we thought it was the flu, honestly. It was had all the flu-like symptoms, um, a lot of chest congestion. and uh, So on Tuesday, we went to the urgent care and um, they said that it was probably the flu. They gave me some um, prednisone and said take this every day for a week and see if you don't feel better. And throughout the week I began to feel worse. Um, Lois called a primary care physician. He was unavailable but his nurse got on the phone. She spoke to me for a moment. Uh, she said give the phone back to your wife. Uh, you're in respiratory distress if not failure. You kind of call 911. He's in respiratory distress. Techs came and picked us up, local volunteers, and got me to St. Tammany right out of the gate. And we were whisked in, and, uh, and that's when the care began. Um, we were, you know, contained in our room um, until they um, ran some other tests to kind of eliminate other things that might have been going on besides the um, pneumonia. The discussion came up about the history, and when I mentioned I'd been in Orlando, uh, that, that appeared to be a red flag. And they moved us up to a room um, I think on the fourth floor, another negative pressure room. Um, and so we stayed there, um, you know, and got the results two days later that he was positive. And the seriousness started to kick in at that point. When they took me out of the emergency room, um, I was in and out a little bit on oxygen, but I could hear him clearing the hallway uh, for me to come through. And, uh, and at that point, it really started to soak in. This is serious business. This is serious business. You know, and so I spent a lot of time in prayer, for sure, reading scripture, um, answering text messages because people were very concerned for Mike. You know, my thought process throughout was that Jesus has us and, and that carried us through. And that was evidenced by the incredible medical team that was put together to take care of us at such an early point in the process with regard to, uh, you know, coronavirus. You know, it is scary and it is hard, but we're not in it alone. You know, and we have wonderful doctors and nurses that are caring for us, you know, all over the country. You know, we, of course, had a wonderful experience at St. Tammany with, with the nurses and doctors there. We could have not have gotten better care. I really believe in my heart of hearts that through prayer from members of our church and our family and folks around the country who were alerted and prayed for me, that a medical team was assembled uh, at St. Tammany that was um, just off the charts in terms of their their compassion, their focus, their readiness to serve, their uh, self-sacrificing nature. They came in when he needed him. You know, it's a, it's a lot of process for what they have to do to be able to come into the hospital, I mean, into the room. And they were so caring, so loving. They prayed with us. Uh, there was Sharon, there was Amber, there was Sarah, there was Sarah, there was Cassidy, there was Maddie. And I mean, they were absolutely like family to me. We talked together, we prayed together, we read scripture together. In the course of world-class medical care, they were my contact, honestly, with the outside world. They were my contact with humanity because that isolation factor um, begins to wear on you a little bit. But I, I was excited every time they came into the room. I was stimulated. I, 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 I felt good, I felt happy. Uh, it was a real uplift. Those people are remarkable. When I found out that they were all volunteers, they volunteered for those services, um, I was just taken aback. They put themselves on the back burner. They put their families on the back burner. They put their personal well-being on the back burner so that they could take care of people like me. You know, anything that you need, they were concerned about me, making sure that I had what I needed. Um, they were just amazing, very compassionate, very loving. It, it really is a medical village. And, and I, I pray that those folks feel the same sense of appreciation from those of us who've been through this as the folks who are, who are on the front lines, as we call it. Because in point of fact, they're all on the front lines.